Well done, Sonny! Yes! For your amazing you, performance you. in the latest Grand Tournament. Yes, I, I was quite amazing. You're again say. champion. Yes, I know. Ten years in a row. Yes, ride. yes, but it was rather foolish to use your arm as a shield. Yes, but I knocked the other man's head off! So, as with any examination, it's essential that one completely exposes the affected limb that should be examined. We begin by looking at the limb, uh, looking for any swelling, any obvious deformities, signs of muscle wasting, color changes, and here we can observe a bruise over the distal ulnar aspect of the forearm. Next, we'll begin feeling, so we're palpating gently along the radius and ulna for any obvious tenderness or um, angulation. Next, we want to assess movement. So this is done by flexing the elbow to 90 degrees to properly assess for supination and pronation and to exclude any dislocation of the radius and ulna. We also want to assess the ability of the patient to flex and extend the wrist. This is also doubling as checking the motor function of the radial nerve. Next, we want to check the median nerve's function and the ulna nerve's function. And there are many different tests for this but it is important to do one that the patient is comfortable with. And we conclude by checking the vascular status of the arm by palpating for the radial pulse, which is present. So, boy, what we have here is a common nightstick fracture. Um, it's, a distal fr it's a fracture of the distal part of the ulna bone. And it's quite common in this occupation, as I'm sure Sally will tell you. Indeed it is. Not to fret, we'll simply put your arm in a cast and you'll be on your way. So, boy, uh, fetch me a bowl of water, please. It shouldn't be too hot. It should be about room temperature, fairly tepid. The, far, the warmer the water is, um, the faster the cast hardens. So we want to have a little bit of time to get yeah, it. Yes, yes, Mr. Ready. And over here I have my... Three lay three rolls of 100 millimeter wide plaster of Paris, yeah, as well as one roll of 100 millimeter wide um, fell band. It's important to have at least three layers um, on these pops in order to ensure sufficient strength. So it's important to start two centimeters below the elbow joint when applying the fell band for a below elbow pop and the fell band should apply, be applied in a 50-50 overlap fashion as demonstrated in the video. Approximately one to two layers should provide sufficient padding and it's important to take care to pad the bony provenance as well. Before applying the pop, one must immerse it completely in tepid water and allow all air bubbles to dissipate. As this is an ulnar fracture, the assistant should hold the arm in 45 degrees flexion and the position of the hand should be neutral, that is slightly palm flexed and ulna deviated. When applying the pop, one can begin at the side of the fracture and care should be taken when applying it to the hand itself as the distal palmar crease should never be covered and this can be achieved by bunching up the pop when one is placing it around the distal web space as shown in the video. It is important not to impinge flexion of the palm um, as when the MCP joint is flexed, the flexor tendons are length uh, at their longest, and if this movement is prevented, a fixed contraction ca contracture of the tendons can develop. So, it's important not to wrap the pop too tightly and to maintain the same 50-50 overlap as shown previously when applying the foul band, and the pop should stop at least two centimeters below the elbow. It can be seen that in this first layer, um, a rim of foul band was left intact at either ends of the pop and this will be folded over and covered in the second layer. With regards to the completion of the pop itself, at least three layers should be used to ensure a structurally sound cast uh, that will maintain the, maintain the reduction adequately. As demonstrated in the video, the remaining layers of foul band are folded over to be covered with the second Again, it should be bunched up when passing the first web into space. Again, it's important to smooth out the pop while whilst one is wrapping it. And this procedure should be done with the palms of the hands, not the fingers, so as to avoid any indenting and to ensure the a regular smooth shape of the pop.
With regards to molding, it will depend on the type of fracture that the patient has experienced. And in this case, none is really required as the patient had a distal ulnar fracture that was not displaced. However, it is still important to ensure that the pop itself has an oblique shape and not a circular shape. And this can be achieved once again through molding with the palm. As always, patient care should never be compromised regard regardless of the medical procedure and the patient should be carefully cleaned following the application of the pop. This is also important so that proper neurovascular assessment can be performed afterwards. So one can see that the cast is smooth, structurally sound, and appears to be one layer of plaster. It's now important to assess uh, movement, uh, f ensure that there's full range of motion. So there's 90 degrees of dorsiflexion of the fingers, full extension, and the patient's neurovascular state should also be assessed. So we check the median nerve, the pulp of the thumb, the ulnar nerve, the pulp of the finger, and the first dorsal interspace for the radial nerve. The patient had normal sensation over these areas. Thank you, Master Eddie. My bone is stronger than ever. Now I can go ride and see them lassies. Glad to hear it, sir, Ali. Just be sure to rest this arm well. No fighting, no swordplay, and see me in seven settings of the sun. I shall indeed. I shall be off now. No, you shall not. Now is my chance. The Lannisters send their regards. Guards, clean up. There goes another one. Typical game of bones. I shall see you, sir Ali. How's that cast? Still solid? Absolutely. Mm -hmm.